In previous videos, I added Creo Simulate Lite to my Creo Parametric installation and also used Part Simplified Reps and the Remove feature to simplify this model. Now let's actually perform an analysis. To enter Creo Simulate Lite, go to your Applications menu, then click the Simulate icon, and you get the process guide. And you're just going to walk through this. And so, First it has this welcome and then you can go to materials and it tells me that I must assign materials to the model. So click the hyperlink for assign and we have the material assignment icon. Then you click the more button to select what material that you want. Let's use 6061 and then click OK. Now you'll see that there is a check mark next to materials. We'll click the next button to move on to constraints. And again, we'll use the hyperlink to add constraints. And in the Constraints Manager, you can see that there are four different kinds of constraints that you can create. Regular displacement constraints. You can also do mechanism-related constraints like a planar constraint, a pin constraint, and a ball constraint. But I'm just going to use a regular displacement constraint. And in the Constraint dialog box, you can change the name and then pick the geometry that you want to control. And so I'm going to pick the cylindrical surfaces for the bottom holes. And you'll notice that when you pick them at first, only half of the cylinder highlights, but then it'll end up selecting the entire cylinder. And some other different controls that you have from the constraint dialog box. If you want to define the constraints in a different coordinate system, aside from the world coordinate system, which is the same as the part default coordinate system, you can choose a different one. And right now we have all X, Y, and Z fixed. You can also set certain degrees of freedom as free or enforce a displacement. Now, since I selected geometry associated with three-dimensional elements, my rotational constraints are meaningless, so I don't have to do anything with them. So let's click OK. And then we can close the Constraint Manager. And then we have the check mark indicating that that's complete. Click the next button to move on to loads. And again, we'll use the hyperlink in the process guide. And we have our load manager. And there are three different kinds of loads that you can create in here. We can do a regular force moment load or a pressure load. And the difference between force moment and pressure is that with force moment, you could define the direction of the load, but with a pressure load, it always acts normal to your geometry. And the third kind of load that you can do is a gravity load. We're going to do a force moment load. I'll pick the upper hole to constrain, and I'm going to have this go up and a little bit to the right. And so let's use a we're just going to define our components. And let's do in the Y direction, 1,000 Newtons. And in the X direction, let's do, oops, negative 100. You can click the Preview button to see a representation of the direction of the load. And if you wanted to define in a different set of units, you have a drop-down list to do so. You can also define a moment if you want, but I'm just going to do this loading over here. Let's click the OK button and click the Close button to complete the loads. Now we'll click the Next button and it tells me that I have to run the analysis. So we'll click the Run button and it's going to run in the background. So let's give that a few seconds. OK, the run has completed. I have my diagnostics in here that's saying that everything went just fine. And when you run this analysis, it's going to use what's called single pass adaptive. With single pass adaptive, it runs with all the elements at a polynomial order of three. And then based on the errors between two different methods that uses to calculate the stresses, it's going to increase the polynomial order up to a maximum level of nine for uh, some of the different elements, again, depending on that stress error. Okay, let's close the diagnostics. Click the Next button, and now we can view the results. And when you click the Results button, it's going to take you over to Results mode and automatically give you results in three different windows. And in the first window, we have our 
Let's see, this one is giving us our Von Mises dress. And Von Mises is nice, especially for metals. Uh, with Von Mises stress, it basically takes your different normal stresses and shear stresses and combines them together to give you a state of loading for the model. You can see that this one is also giving us an animated deformation. In the second window, we are getting our displacement results using our contour plots, and it's not animated. And the third window shows the max principal stresses, and this one is using a vector plot. If there are certain windows that you don't like, you can close them, and you can also select an existing window and choose the Edit button and say, hey, you know what? Rather than having this deformed by a scale of 10, which I personally don't prefer, I prefer a scaling of 1. And then I can click OK and Show. And so we're seeing that, yeah, it's not really displacing that much. And with my stresses, you can see, okay, yeah, we're having a value of 27, and that's in megapascals. So in this way, you can use Creo Simulate to run basic static analyses of your models. And just be aware that with Creo Simulate Lite, uh, it only allows you to run those static analyses, and you can't run any of the other different kinds like modal or pre-stress static, pre-stress modal, or any of the dynamic analyses or thermal analyses. But this is a great little tool for people to use in conjunction with the design process. And again, Creo Simulate Lite comes with every license of Creo Parametric. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.